Chapter 8, 16 Islets Sometimes Bat wished that Janie went to his school, because it would be kind of neat to see her in the hallways and at lunchtime, but most of the time he was glad that his school was something he didn't have to share with her. Janie attended the Robert E. Willett Elementary School, but this was her last year. Next fall, she would be going to junior high school. Bat went to a private school. It had smaller classes than the public school, and his parents thought it was a better fit for him, which was fine with Bat. Mr. Grayson was a good teacher who never yelled and who usually let Bat wear his earmuffs if things get too loud. Also, his school, the Sawwet School, was named after the type of owl. The main hallway of the Sawwet School was a busy place until 8.35 a.m. when class officially started. Until then, it was full of parents walking the younger kids, those in kindergarten and first grade, to their classes and older kids walking themselves, all while the principal, Mrs. Martinez, stood outside the administration office smiling and being friendly. Bat, called Mrs. Martinez, waving and smiling. Bat didn't feel like talking to Mrs. Martinez, so he pretended he didn't see her and slid into the far side of the hallway as he passed. That way, she couldn't reach out and rumple his hair. Bat hated it when people rumpled his hair, and Miss Martinez loved to rumple hair. She had never yet rumpled his hair, and Bat wanted to keep it that way. Bat liked, Bat liked the main hallway better when all the other kids were in their classrooms. Right now, Luca and Israel, two kids in Bat's same class, were struggling out of their rain boots on the big rubber mat. It wasn't raining, but dark clouds peppered the sky in a way that could mean that recess would be wet. At Saw Wet School, one of the philosophies was that students should go outside, rain or shine or snow. Bat, Bat hadn't worn rain boots, so he didn't have any that he needed to take off. He didn't carry an umbrella either, because the Shaw Wet School didn't allow them in the hallways or classrooms, which Bat agreed was a wise decision. He skirted around a kindergartner, whose mother was kneeling in front of him, holding a tissue to his nose. Blow, she said, and he dodged between a couple of big, ki big kids, sixth graders, who were tossing a small red rubber ball back and forth. Balls are supposed to be kept outside, Bat told the slightly smaller of the two big kids, a boy he recognized by the red glasses he wore. Not this ball, said the boy. This is a special ball. Then he threw the ball over Bat's head to the other kid. A very tall girl who caught it expertly with one hand and laughed. It looks like a regular ball, Bat said. It's not a regular ball, said the boy with red glasses. Bat had a weird feeling in his stomach, like the boy was tricking him. He didn't know what to say. Just then, Luca and Israel came by without their rain boots. Hey, Bat, Israel said. Do you think it'll rain? Maybe, said Bat. Well, eventually, yes, but today, maybe. Relieved, Bat watched the two big kids move away towards their classroom, still tossing the ball. What do you think was special about that ball? He asked Israel. Nothing, Israel said. Then Miss Kiko came out of the kindergarten room and rang her handbell. It made a gentle, tinkling sound, way better than the harsh, painful scream of Janie's electric school bell system, which Bat had heard last year during a school play he'd had to watch. To class, to class, it's time for another day, Miss Kinko had a beautiful voice, which was probably why it was her job to announce the start of school. Bat followed Luca and Israel into Mr. Grayson's third grade classroom. I brought two sandwiches for lunch today, Luca was telling Israel, in case you want to trade cookies for one. Why would I want to do that, Israel answered. I brought my own sandwich. Bat knew why Luca would think Israel wanted to trade. Yesterday, he had heard Luca tell Israel that she didn't really like her cream cheese sandwiches, and Israel had replied that he didn't like the turkey on, on his mom, the turkey one that his mom always made. I would trade anything for a cream cheese sandwich, he had said. He listened to see if Luca would remind Israel of what he had said, but she didn't. Probably Israel was just being nice. That interjected. To make you feel better about bringing cream cheese sandwiches to school every day. He probably didn't really want your sandwich. Israel turned around. His face was red and his eyebrows pointed towards each other, making a wrinkly crinkle in his forehead. Dude, he said to Bat. Bat waited for Israel to say more, but he didn't. Just that one word, dude. 
Then Luca started crying. And she shoved past Bat to go back into the hallway. He watched her run into the girls' bathroom. Mr. Grayson came over. He was wearing his bright orange tennis shoes today. Bat liked it when he wore these shoes. It was like he was wearing suns on his feet. What's the problem, friends, he asked. Bat embarrassed Luca. Israel said really loudly, making Bat wish he had his earmuffs. They were in his backpack on his back. I'm sure you didn't mean to embarrass her, did you, Bat? asked Mr. Grayson. There were 16 eyelets in each of his shoes, Bat counted. Eight on the left side, eight on the right side. That made 32 eyelets. Bat, can you look up at my face, Mr. Grayson asked. Bat shook his head. 32 eyelets. His own shoes had half as many. 16 eyelets, four on each side of each shoe. Mr. Grayson sighed. Okay, Bat, go sit at your table. Bat wondered if anyone in class had more eyelets in their shoes than Mr. Grayson. He kept his eyes on shoes as he walked to the classroom. Nope, no one did. Chapter 9, Open Door, Baby Cakes Policy. Mr. Grayson was a good teacher for lots of reasons. He let kids eat snacks at their desk if they were hungry. He didn't make students ask permission to go to the bathroom. He didn't believe in making people apologize. You can't make someone be sorry, he always said. And he believed in class pets. That's how he put it. I believe in class pets, he had said on the very first day of class when he introduced them to Baby Cakes, the class rabbit. Baby Cakes, a white Angora bunny that looked like a giant fluff ball, lived in a pen in the back of the room near the bookshelves. It was a big pen with a gate. If anyone ever needs to cuddle, Mr. Grayson said, Baby Cakes is there for you. And there, and that was the thing that made Mr. Grayson the best teacher Bat had ever had. His open door baby cakes policy, which meant that any time a kid needed to cuddle, he or she could go visit baby cakes. No permissions needed, no questions asked. Baby cakes liked carrots and apples and put up with the cuddling. Bat knew that rabbit liked treats better than kids, but he also knew that baby cakes was smart enough to realize that the two often went together. The thing about Mr. Grayson's open door baby cakes policy was that none of the kids wanted to ruin it by overusing it. Bat was baby cakes' most frequent visitor. Israel visited the second most often, and then probably Jenny was the third. A couple of months ago, Israel had given Bat a drawing he'd done of baby cakes. It was pretty good. Bat usually tried to visit baby cakes during recess or lunch, when a visit wouldn't mean leaving the group time. But today, he didn't think he could wait until recess. Maybe because he missed the baby skunk so much. When Mr. Grayson had everyone pull out the money game, payday, that they played on Fridays, Bat slipped away from his table and headed to the back of the room. Today, Baby Cakes wasn't sleeping. She was just sitting in her, front, in her favorite spot on top of the plastic hutch where she slept. She looked like white cotton candy. Bat sat close to Baby Cakes and put his hand on her back just to let her know he was there. He didn't want to startle her. Break into four groups, Mr. Grayson said. Choose a banker and pay everyone $200. For a moment, Bat thought maybe Mr. Grayson was going to let him skip the game and just hang out with baby cakes. But then he said, Bat, five minutes. Bat didn't want to play payday. He didn't want to join the class in five minutes. But the open door baby cakes po policy didn't mean it was okay to skip stuff that the class was doing. It was one of those unspoken rules that mom had always been talking about. Those things that people are supposed to know without having to be told. Bat hated unspoken rules, but he loved the open door baby cakes policy. So when five minutes later, Mr. Grayson said, Okay, Bat, time's up. Bat reluctantly scooted baby cakes off his lap where he had set her and rejoined the class. The games were all arranged. Jenny Pearson had dealt out two hundred dollars for Bat, Luca, or for Bat. Luca, Bat saw, had returned from the bathroom with red-rimmed eyes. She was in a different group. Ready? Jenny asked. I guess said Bat, and he sat in the empty seat between Jenny and Raymond. Across from him, Corey rolled the dice. Bat sighed. It was going to be a long day.